Henderson Island is part of the Pacific Territory of Pitcairn, but lies 200 kilometers from Pitcairn Island itself, and some 10,000 kilometers from the coast of South America, lost in the vastness of the South Pacific. To get here, I've caught a ride on the freighter, Claymore 2, which connects Pitcairn Island with Mangareva in French Polynesia. Henderson is only 10 kilometers by five kilometers, yet it's a vitally important place. It's virtually the last example of a raised coral island in the Pacific with an intact ecosystem. These beautiful beaches are pretty much as remote as you can get on the surface of the planet. But as remote as Henderson is, some creatures seem to have no difficulty in finding it. This bristle-thighed curlew has traveled here from breeding grounds in far away Alaska. Tiny Henderson Island is one of the most important wintering grounds for this rare bird. Although how it can possibly find the island in the vastness of the Pacific is one of the great mysteries of the world. Henderson's lush forests are home to other long distance travelers. Henderson petrels, which range far and wide over the ocean, but only breed on Henderson. Land birds have also managed to discover this place. They stayed and evolved into species found nowhere else on the planet but here. The Henderson lorikeet, a colorful little parrot. The Henderson fruit dove. And the elusive Henderson crake, a flightless bird that skulks on the forest floor. But Henderson's unique birds haven't always had this place to themselves. Polynesians were just as adept at traveling vast distances across the Pacific and in finding tiny islands to colonize. They found Henderson around 800 years ago. And when they arrived, the island abounded in life. Henderson is larger than Pitcairn, and there's abundant food here. The flightless land birds would have been easy prey for the Polynesians. And these land hermit crabs that cover the ground would have been easy pickings. And of course, the reefs also just teem with fish. There's been about 20 major habitation sites discovered so far on the cliffs that surround the island. And that indicates approximately 100 Polynesians could have once lived here. On such a small island, even 100 people can have a big impact and several birds seem to have disappeared during the Polynesian occupation. The Polynesians themselves disappeared around 500 years ago, perhaps to colonize new islands. And apart from a few shipwrecked sailors, Henderson has been uninhabited ever since. But the Polynesian influence is still being felt. Pacific rats hitched rides on Polynesian canoes, and like the Polynesians, they have crisscrossed the Pacific. On Henderson, they eat around 90% of all seabird chicks within a week of hatching. To return Henderson to a truly pristine state means getting rid of the rats. In 2011, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds and the Pitcairn government began a massive eradication campaign. In the two years since the rat eradication project was completed, an expedition has returned here to Henderson Island, and apparently they unfortunately saw a rat. Rats are still here, though their lower numbers after the eradication campaign has meant some bird populations have risen, at least until rat numbers build back up again. Henderson Island remains uninhabited, and it's about as far from the rest of the world and humanity as you can possibly get. But as more and more private yachts travel across the oceans of the globe, the risk of introducing more non-native species to habitats such as this one is ever increasing. How is it possible to police the most remote and uninhabited corners of the globe? 
How can we prevent more ecological disasters from happening again and from history from repeating itself? Even this, one of the most unsport places on the planet, still bears the hand of humanity. As I leave this tiny speck of land, it gives me pause for thought. Will the next generation of people be able to find anywhere at all that resembles pristine nature? The Britain's Treasure Islands book explores the unique wildlife, cultures and history of all of the UK overseas territories. Visit britainstreasureislands.com for details. In sincere thanks to Lord Ashcroft for funding the donation of one copy of the Britain's Treasure Islands book to every secondary school across the UK and her overseas territories. Thanks also to all Kickstarter backers and all sponsors and partners for making the 40 mini documentaries possible.